Powerful prayers. We pray, we get what we want. Yeah? Welcome to our third and final prayer exercise in this series. Today we're gonna to be looking at an exercise that we've done a couple times before in youth, and that's been done for centuries among believers. It's called Lectio Divina. It means divine word. And this is a prayer exercise where we reflect upon scripture, a little bit like we've been doing already. It's a time to listen or read over and over a small passage in the Bible and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. It's a practice of scriptural meditation, one that I could go on for a long time because of its rich, deep, beautiful history, but I wanna keep it brief for us today. I'll be giving you some instruction and I'll be linking below an article that will help you um, get a richer understanding of this practice. But what it boils down to is I'll read a passage, give you a little bit of instruction, read a passage, give you instruction, read a passage, give you an instruction, and just let you sit with the word, with the scripture, and with the words that God is asking you to focus on and to highlight in the ways he wants to speak to you through this passage. There'll be a time where you're invited to pray, to talk to God about what is being highlighted to you and why. And there'll be a time of rest, of just sitting in silence with God. So today our Lectio is coming from Luke 13, verses 18 to 21. So I ask that you take a moment, close your eyes, Take a deep breath. Holy Spirit, we invite you to speak through this divine word, through the words of Jesus. You can keep your eyes closed throughout this exercise as I give you instruction. I'm gonna read the passage once and ask that you just listen and maybe let the Holy Spirit draw your attention to a word or a phrase within these verses. Then Jesus said, What is the kingdom of God like? How can I illustrate it? It's like a tiny mustard seed that a man planted in a garden. It grows and becomes a tree, and the birds make nests in its branches. He also asked, What else is the kingdom of God like? It is like the yeast a woman used in making bread. Even though she put only a little yeast in three measures of flour, it permeated every part of the dough. I'm going to read it again and ask that you remember that word or phrase that stuck out to you and focus on it again. Maybe asking some questions about why it's standing out to you and letting the Holy Spirit speak. Then Jesus said, what is the kingdom of God like? How can I illustrate it? It's like a tiny mustard seed that a man planted in a garden. It grows and becomes a tree, and the birds make nests in its branches. He also asked, what else is the kingdom of heaven like? It's like the yeast a woman used in making bread. Even though she put only a little yeast in three measures of flour, it permeated every part of the dough. As I read our passage a third time, I invite you to pray, to talk to God about what he's stirring in this part of the passage, what he's stirring in your heart. And I'll give you a little more silence after I read to talk to him about it. Then Jesus said, what is the kingdom of God like? How can I illustrate it? It is like a tiny mustard seed that a man planted in a garden it grows and becomes a tree, and the birds make nests in its branches. He also asked, what else is the kingdom of God like? 
It's like the yeast a woman used in making bread. Even though she only put a little yeast in three measures of flour, it permeated every part of the dough. Holy Spirit, we thank you for speaking to us. May you continue to speak to us this week and remind us of what you have said today. Amen. Lectio is a great exercise to do together as a small group. You can have one person reading aloud while the rest reflect. It's also something you can do with the Bible app. You can listen with your headphones. If sitting is difficult for you, walk around the room and let yourself um, be moving while you're listening, while you're reflecting. Something I love that my mom got me onto is this app called Lectio 365. It has daily exercises, 365, that lead you through some gentle music, some scripture, and some guided prayer. It's a really beautiful resource that I'll recommend, and it would be a wonderful way to incorporate Lectio, incorporate this reflection into your daily life. Blessings as you pray. Welcome to WB Youth Online. My name is Greg Reed. I'm the pastor of discipleship here at WB Church, and I'm glad to be speaking to you during this session. This session is about powerful prayers. And I really want you to think about this, that powerful prayers are not about us. They're about God. And they're about God's ability to do things, not ours. But prayer is done in relationship with God. To be effective, there's going to be some things I want to talk about. But before we get into that, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that we can gather um, online. And we pray that uh, you would speak. God, that these would not be my words, but they would be yours as we look at your word, at your scriptures about prayer. Lead and guide us during this time. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. So... Here's my premise. As you take time to seek the Lord in prayer, to be in communication with him, I really want you to consider that your prayer life needs to have three things in it. Uh, your prayers need to be continuous. They need to be persistent and they need to be aligned with God's will. So let's start with continuous. Did you know that when you pray, you have to keep on praying? Your prayer should be continuous. It should be constant. It should be all the time. And I want to take a look at a few Bible verses on this. The first one comes out of Luke chapter 18. One day Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. Now, Renee already spoke to you on the Lord's Prayer and on that model of prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. But this verse begins another teaching from Jesus on prayer. He was teaching his disciples this. And we'll get into the story that he tells a bit later on, but right now I want you to notice He's calling his disciples to always pray. The next verse I want to look at is in Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. So we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. You see, Paul was writing to a church in Colossae, a church that he was a leader of at one point. And Paul is interceding for that church and he's interceding for the lives of the people there, that they would do God's will and know his will. You see, he wants their lives to make a difference in God's kingdom. And he's praying continuously with regularity so that those he was leading would follow God's ways. It's amazing that we have this example. 
The last example of a continuous prayer is in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I love these verses because they're part of a summary of Paul's whole letter to this church. And so he wraps things up by saying, always be joyful, never stop praying, be thankful in all circumstances for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. So you get it. Paul is even now teaching the same thing teach Jesus was teaching earlier on that we should always be praying, that we should never stop praying, that our communication with God should be continuous. Praying all the time because we're his followers, we're his disciples, and we want to be in relationship with him. So Jesus tells us to pray, Paul examples it, and Paul tells us to pray. So I want you to think about this. Where are you communicating lots? Where are you always communicating? Might it be social media? Might it be that you're communicating way more often with your friends, with your family, with the whole world, with the whole internet than you are with God? And so there's too many things in this world that distract us and, and keep us moving around in different ways. And we need to be focusing on that relationship with Jesus and praying to him. And so I invite you to pray a bit more continuously. Don't just give that one second prayer, that one word prayer or that one sentence prayer. Those are good, but it's this attitude of constantly being in communication with God. And so I invite you into that. And now I'd like to move on to how our prayers need to be persistent. That our communication with God, specifically our requests of God, our prayers should be persistent. Jesus both exampled this and used it and calls us also to be persistent in prayer. So let's take a look again. We've got the same verse in Luke chapter 18. One day Jesus told his disciples a story. We're going to get to that story, I promise. To show that they should always pray and never give up. Like this is, this is powerful. Never give up in your prayers. Luke chapter 6 verse 12. One day soon afterward, Jesus went up on a mountain to pray and he prayed to God all night. This is huge. This is so amazing. Because Jesus had some big decisions to make. He wanted to figure out who of his disciples would be the leaders. And so, you know, he eventually chose 12 disciples. Well, that choosing came out of this prayer. He needed to hear from his father on this. So he took time away, he went away, and he prayed all night. In essence, Jesus was persistent in his prayer until he heard from his father, until he had an answer to that prayer that was tangible and he was able to move forward with it. The next verse in Mark, afterward, when Jesus was alone in the house with his disciples, they asked him, why couldn't we cast out the evil spirit? Well, Jesus replied, this kind can be cast out only by prayer, and I put in and fasting in brackets because not all versions have that. But I want to point out something here. This story is amazing. And I don't know if you know it very well, but read back the whole um, chapter 9 of Mark because this is a great story. Jesus goes up with three of his disciples on a mountain. Some amazing, miraculous stuff happens. Go check it out. And then they come down the mountain. There's lots of teaching that goes on. But they come down and the rest of the disciples have been working with the people. And they've been healing and doing all sorts of things. But there's an argument that uh, was going on because this one person really wanted his kid to be healed from this evil spirit that was prevalent in his life. And so the disciples couldn't do it. They couldn't cast out this demon. And Jesus, later on, when he's got them alone, says, here's why. You didn't pray, and you didn't fast, you weren't persistent. And so in essence, they weren't putting in the work necessary to actually enact God's will through prayer. So that's persistence. Jesus tells us never to give up. Jesus never gave up. And he told his disciples, you've got to put in the work. Like, you can't just say a prayer, but sometimes you've got to take a day or two. You've got to fast. You've got to work, work out the details with God. And again, this is all about relationship with God. That's what prayer is about. So let's move on. We've got this alignment. We've got to be aligned with God's will. You know, disciples, they're continuous 
they're persistent in their prayer and in their relationship with God, but it's important that it's in alignment with his will as well and within that relationship. And so my first verse for this section is out of John chapter 14. Just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe because of the work you've seen me do. I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the Father. You can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Wow, these are powerful, powerful things that Jesus is promising us to ask anything in his name and he will do it. But I want you to realize that I highlighted the same work. This is all about doing the will of the Father. And sometimes we enter prayer and we think, you know, God is this slot machine. We can put in a coin and say the right words and, and get what we want. But it's really about us responding to him in our relationship. So we're consistent, we're persistent, but we've also got to be in line with the work that he wants for us and the work that he wants to do in and through us. And I know many of you youth that are watching this and I've seen God work in and through you and he wants to do so much more, but we've got to do this with his authority and in his name. We need the Holy Spirit to help us as well. All right, let's go on to the next verse, Romans chapter eight. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father, who knows all hearts, knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us, believers, in harmony with God's own will. Renee touched on this as well, but I think it's just important that we're reminded that there's this combination going on, right? There's something we want to pray about, and we want it to be in alignment with God's will. And sometimes we don't even know how to pray for that because we're not sure exactly how to say it. Are we right? Are we wrong? Just say it and let the Holy Spirit intercede and transfer and groan and do whatever he does so that the Father hears your prayers. But make sure you're doing it with an attitude of humility, knowing that it's God's will that you want. This is so key in making sure that we're aligned with God's will. Lastly, 1 John, and this is really where John is agreeing about this alignment that we should have with God. And he is confident that God will hear our prayers. He says, I've written this so that you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know you have eternal life. And we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. And since we know that he hears us when we make our requests, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. Wow, again, powerful. God hears us. And there's something about faith here, right? There's something about we need to believe and have confidence that God is hearing our prayers. And as we look at this story in just a minute, because we're going to get there, that Jesus was teaching his disciples, we're going to see that there has to be faith. There has to be this confidence behind our prayers. And the confidence comes when we know that the Spirit's interceding and we know that um, what we're praying for, God is actually hearing because he loves us and because we're in relationship with him. So alignment, really, really good. I want to say one more thing, and you can see on the screen, just recapping those verses, but I want to say one more thing about this authority piece. You know, if I decided, let's say I decided to trust Renee, and I'm going to trust Renee by signing up a credit card for her on my account. So in other words, I'm going to give her authority to spend my money, but I'm going to make a deal with Renee. Renee, this is for emergency use only. You can uh, buy the essentials, like groceries if you really need them. You can put gas in your car if you really need it. You can buy some school books if you really need them, but it's essentials. And then Renee, obedient young woman, she's gonna go out and she's gonna spend really appropriately. But then she and her friends get together and all of a sudden they decide they need to go out and have some fun and they're gonna, they're gonna rent a car. 
they're gonna go you know get some hotel rooms and they're gonna go to you know some sunny destination when COVID's over and all of a sudden she's spending thousands and thousands and thousands of my dollars do you think I'm gonna let her keep the credit card probably not because there's a relationship and when we extend authority to somebody we want them to use that authority wisely and so when we say the words in Jesus name when we pray with his authority make sure you're aligned with his will because if you're not he's going to take away your credit card right and he's not going to enact and he's not going to go to the father with that prayer because he's looking for you to be responsible in the authority he's given you does that make sense i hope so and later on you can talk about it in your groups all right here's the story you've been waiting for the story that jesus told to teach on prayer i love this story it's about a persistent widow and remember in the first century widows really didn't have much power they didn't have authority they didn't have money they didn't own things right because they were alone and they needed care and help and when they were seeking justice it was really important that you know they were persistent, they were continuous, and all this stuff. Let's read the story, and then I'll get into it a little bit further. Love this story. You already know the beginning. One day Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. Here's the story. There was a judge in a certain city, Jesus said, who neither feared God nor cared about people. A widow of that city came to him repeatedly, saying, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. The judge ignored her for a while, but finally said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. I'm gonna see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her constant requests. Then the Lord said, learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end so don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on the earth who have faith? This is really powerful. This widow is dealing with a judge who's not God. Remember this God, this judge is not God fearing. He, they're not trying to say that the judge is God. What Jesus is trying to say is that when we're in relationship, and when we have needs, we need to be persistent, we need to be constant, and we need to be asking for the right thing, the right thing. And usually that right thing is in God's will. This widow was asking for justice. She was asking for the right thing to be done. The judge really didn't want to do the right thing, but because of her persistence and because of her constant, constant going back to the judge, her request was granted. We serve a God who loves us incredibly, and he is inviting us to be part of his plan, part of his kingdom, and he's called us to love him, to love others, and to go into this world and to tell others about that amazing love of Jesus so that others can spend eternity with God. This is what prayer is really about. So if you want your prayers to be powerful, if you want to be heard by God and to see him move mountains, to see him do incredibly more than you could ask or imagine. You've got to do a little bit of work. You've got to pray all the time. When you're walking down the road, when you're at school, when you're at your part-time job, when you're with your parents, you've got to be continuously in communication with God. And then when he draws something into your heart that's in alignment with his will, keep, keep, keep going after him. Keep asking and asking and asking and listen for his response. He might even change your prayer a little bit. It's gonna be a powerful, powerful thing. So I invite you to pray constantly, continuously, 
to pray with persistence, and to seek alignment for God's will with what you're praying. Would you do that in these days? I hope you have a great time discussing this later on in your groups. Bless you. Let me pray for you as we finish off. Father in heaven, we love the fact that you love us. And we do not want to take advantage of what you've given us and the authority you've given us. Would you give us wisdom in our prayers? As we finish off this series, God, we've learned about prayer in so many ways. How to pray, why we pray, and and what it means to be effective in prayer. Help us to understand your will in these days. And we would pray with that authority. And I ask that you would really bring all those listening to this into alignment with your will and prayer. And God, I pray that you would raise up this generation to be prayer warriors, to be constantly looking to you um, for that next step, for that advice, for that way that we should go. Come Holy Spirit of God, lead and guide each one. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Why God answers some prayers, but not others, even if it seems aligned with his will. So we're all thinking this. God's will, we're continuous in our prayers, we're aligned, we're being persistent, but the prayer's not answered. You know, often we think of this when it comes to praying for healing. We pray for healing for someone because God tells us in his word that when people are sick, we should pray that they get healed. And they don't get healed. And we wonder, you know, why? And what we have to remember is that this is about our relationship with God and our trust and our faith in him. And we have to remember that God loves us incredibly and that faith is really trusting in him and in his perspective, a perspective we don't have because we're not God. And God is going to work out all things for the good of those that love him. I love God and he's going to work out tons of stuff for my good. However, I don't always see it because some of that stuff I have to go through so that I can be better down the road. Some of that stuff might happen in eternity. My father died of cancer. My father the church gathered around him many years ago and prayed for healing, and he died. But my dad, before he died, actually said these words. I want you in the church to know that God has healed me. Because my father understood that there was so much more broken in him other than the physical cancer that killed him. And the healing was in his relationship with God. And now he's in eternity with God, healed. And so it sucks. It sucked for me that I, I lost my dad. But the healing actually took place. And we just don't see it happening all the time. Frustrating, I know. But keep your faith in God because he's working out those things. And he's faithful and he will do it.